Hi, everyone, and welcome to the King Gordon Show today's Best Country Mix. And joining me right here is Jake Willis. Hey, Jake, how are you doing today? Hey, Caden, thanks for having me. I'm doing great. That's good to hear. So kind of tell us a little bit on how you got started with your music. Yeah, thanks for asking. I, I've i been a musician pretty much all my life, grew up in a musical family, um, and uh, really cut my teeth um, doing the kind of like contemporary worship music thing in my churches growing up. Um, started doing cover gigs around town, stuff like that. And really, I guess about three years ago, finally started finding a voice for my own writing that I was really happy with. And sort of when I hit that point, I said, okay, I think it's time to put some stuff out there that's my own and to, um, to say what I want to say and to put it out in the world. So I released uh, my first EP last December, and I'm working on another one right now. That's awesome. What is one thing that you most enjoy about music? Man, I think, I think what I've enjoyed lately with songwriting is just being able to use it as a tool to process life and, and as, a, as a way to compose. And um, I mean, it's really therapeutic to be able to sit down and compose a song that says something I've been thinking or trying to work through and get it out there, or even to just enter like a narrator into a, a story I'm creating and like experience what those characters might be feeling. I think as a writer, that's, that's brought me a lot of joy lately. I've always loved playing and just getting to play, but I think that's something that, that the last couple years have, has been really fun for me. If you could do that with any singer, who would it be and why? Oh man. What a great question. The two names that first come to mind would be Chris Stapleton, which I just get blown away as a vocalist. That's like, I don't even know why I said, I don't even know why I said that. It just would look foolish. Um, or like, <laughs> or like Taylor Swift. Um, always loved her writing and the duets she's done have been cool. So I think those are the first two that come to mind for me. Do you have someone or something that inspired you to start writing your music and singing? Um, you know, I, I have always kind of dabbled in it. And it really was, um, I think the inspiration was finding how, finding out how um, the honesty that can come from writing a song when you're willing to be vulnerable with it um, can be a really um, therapeutic and healing process. And so I think I always knew I liked it, but I actually had to work up the courage to be vulnerable enough to do it and then to put it out there. So um, maybe not anyone in particular. Uh, I think I grew up around in a family that really appreciated good songwriting. And so that's, that's always kind of been a part of it. But that's that's what it's been for me. Yeah. Where can people find you on social media, Jake? Uh, you can find me on social media on Instagram at the Jake Willis on Facebook. I mostly use the page that my my duo uh, has, which is Jake uh, Facebook.com slash Willis Brenner music. Also all on Spotify under my name, Jake Willis, Apple Music, all that stuff under Jake Willis or my YouTube channel is um, is Jake Willis Music, uh, youtube.com slash Jake Willis Music. Awesome. Where do you see yourself for the next five to 10 years? Um, you know, I, I, we've got a really great life here built in Charleston. So at the moment we plan to stay here, my wife and I, we just had our first uh, baby actually about a month ago. And um, that's very exciting. And um, we've kind of got some roots here in the musical community here. And so I probably plan to stay here, but my plan is to just keep the foot on the gas as much as I can on writing and producing, putting stuff out there, playing. I've got a full band that we're just kind of ramping up to playing, um, to playing around. So um, really trying to see to, to get this thing out there and see, and see what I can do here locally in the kind of South Carolina community and then see where it goes from there. Do you have any uh, new singles or any upcoming projects that we can look forward to? I do. I've got a project uh, or I've got a I've got a single coming out on mm -hmm. October the 15th. Um, it's called Never Thought You'd Leave. And it's kind of like a uh, it's got kind of a, like an old school feel, almost like a sitting on the dock of the bay type of type, type of beat um and uh yeah really looking forward to getting that out there so that'll be available on all streaming platforms and downloading services on friday october the 15th um so yeah looking forward to that what is your creative process like when you create your music mm, um for me it starts a lot of the times it starts with something i'm walking around the house and just humming in my head and if i notice that i'm singing something and i don't know what it is um, I try to record it because usually if it's like kind of subconscious like that, it's kind of catchy. And mm -hmm. if I try to sit down with a guitar and do something catchy, it's like harder to manufacture it. So I was like almost every song on my EP, the hook started with something I was just 
subconsciously singing. And I went, got to write that down. Got to remember what that is. And then usually I kind of will pair it with, with an, with a lyric idea I have and, um, and see what I'll kind of create from there. I'd say that's probably the most common way, but sometimes it'll start with an instrumental hook. Sometimes it'll start with a lyric idea and I'll put the melody around it. Um, but that seems to be something that really works for me. Yeah. Well, that's great. Yeah. Do you have any hobbies or interests outside of music? Oh, let me think. I I love I love just being outdoors. Um, you know, living in Charleston, South Carolina, we've got so many great beaches and um, like parks. And um, I think more than anything, we like to get out and do kind of hikes around the area uh, in the um, in the mar in the marsh trails and stuff like that. Um, do a lot of that. Like, I've never been the most athletic, but I do enjoy getting out there and playing a little pickup basketball or volleyball or something like that here or there. Um, but man, I really do. I don't, I don't really get burned out on music. I spend a lot of my time thinking about music. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What is the best piece of advice another musician has ever given you? Oh, what a good question. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I did not mean to stop you there, my friend. I did not mean Ooh, that. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. I think, um, I think one of the best pieces of advice from just a very practical, kind of pragmatic one but is learning what like what's called the Nashville number system which is basically understanding uh it's kind of the do re mi thing it's understanding how a scale works and how the chords fit within the scale and if you really can understand that as a as a composer um it really opens up to where if you you can you can kind of hear where things where you want things to go in your head it's almost like a chess player seeing a couple moves ahead once you can really understand uh, the number system stuff, you can start pl like plotting out the song better than if you're just kind of, you know, kind of just plucking your way through some open chords. So I think that was a really good piece of advice I got in high school, which was to really get familiar with how that works. And I think that has served me really well compositionally. If you could open for any artist, who would it be? Mm, um, I could open for any artist. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with Ed Sheeran because I think his kind of wide swath of um, his kind of wide base as a singer songwriter I think fits with kind of what I do, um, where I'll write some stuff that's um, very kind of singer songwritery, some stuff that's very country, some stuff that's very pop. Um, the kind of uh, ability to go in and out of that. I think that's where I, I think that's where I go. And he has a huge audience. So I get a huge audience. Mm -hmm. um, I think, I think that would be a fit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have you ever participated in any uh, music competitions? I did. Yeah. I actually won the next, well, that's a good, um, good, good question to ask. Cause the next single that's coming out is actually has a story related to that. So um, I won a contest um, for a song uh, that I sent to you called no one left in my hometown. Mm -hmm. Um, the song No One Left in My Hometown won a, a, a songwriter competition here locally. And um, I, one of the, the grand prize of that was getting a fully produced single with a studio in town. And so the next song that I've got coming out is the result of winning that competition. And uh, that's the one that will be out on October 15th. So yeah, I, I won that. Um, the, um, yeah, and then I've had some, some local radio play here through some kind of local competitions and stuff like that they've done. But that's, that's kind of the biggest, most recent one. Awesome. What does your typical day look like? Um, that's a good question. I am a full-time musician, but I'm not a full-time performer. So I teach a lot of guitar and piano lessons. Um, so a lot of days are spent doing that. And I also do still lead worship at my church. So um, I lead the band uh, there on Sundays and rehearse there. So um, between, I kind of usually think of my kind of career as kind of three-pronged between what I do performing and writing and doing kind of the, my own music thing, um, the teaching lessons, which I really love. I love teaching and, um, and um, my, my part-time job leading, leading worship at my church. So that's, that's kind of my day job, which is like, I'm so lucky to be able to do that and to kind of exercise different musical muscles and all of those things. Um, really, like, I really enjoy that, yeah. What is one message that you would like to give your fans or anyone listening to this? Mm. Um, um like fans or it's aspiring musicians or all of the above more towards fans okay um i think um i think i think to fans i'd say just you know um 
as a music listener and consumer, um, you know, take the time to empathize with your favorite artists and your favorite songwriters and listen to where they're coming from um, lyrically, which you probably already do. If you're listening to this show, you probably are interested in music. Um, but I mean, I think, I think songwriting is such a great avenue for personal expression, um, even beyond just music. And I think, I think my advice, um, yeah, would be to just really dig into that craft as just a fan of music and to understand what makes your favorite writers tick and why. And I think that um, I continuously feel like my, my appreciation for the craft deepens the more I just try to expand my own horizons, um, the more I try to dig deep on the things I think are really good. Um, yeah. Is there anything else that I forgot they'd like to share with us today? Oh man, um, not not uh, not too much. I definitely appreciate you giving me a chance to plug my um, my music. I definitely would would really love if if all your listeners would take a chance uh, to go check out my EP that's out now called Where I Am, um, and it's kind of a hybrid um, pop, folk, and country. I'd say it leans a little bit country, but I didn't want to be that guy that calls country call something country that isn't i'd rather call it pop and it lean country than call it country mm -hmm. it would actually be pop mm -hmm. um because everybody gets annoyed when people try to pass things off as country that isn't <laughs> so I'd, I'd i call it a, a hybrid um country and pop and folk EP. yeah a little bit of both you know a little bit of all and mm -hmm. um and so i'd love for you to check that out. it's a six song project it's about 20 minutes long it's called where i am it's available anywhere you get music on the internet and uh, keep an eye out for the next one, which is going to have a little more of like a throwback feel. Um, everything on this next one seems to be leaning towards um, more inspiration, drawing out of almost there's like a cow, there's like an outlaw country thing on it. There's like a um, folksy, like Avid Brothersy thing on it. Um, there's kind of some stuff that I think has more of a retro feel. Um, the last one I felt like had a very like current singer songwriter feel. So keep an eye out for that coming up probably early next year. And um, yeah, definitely check out Where I Am, which is out everywhere now. Well, I just want to say a huge thank you to Jake Willis for joining me right here on the King Gordon Show today's Best Country Mix. We appreciate the time to talk to us, Jake. Yeah, thank you, Caden. Not a problem. Anytime.